It's Sunday, and that means it's time for the Hook of the Week. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. If you're just joining us for the Hook of the Week for the first time, I'm going through a disintegrating plastic bucket full of unusual materials. Some people might call it junk, but you and I know better. And once a week, I'm going to try and take something out of that bucket or multiple pieces out of the bucket and try and make some kind of a hook out of it. So let's take a look in the bucket and see what piece of material we're going to use this week. There's some really obscure stuff in this bucket. There's some big stuff. There's some little stuff. Why don't we use something like this little flat piece here? We should be able to come up with something that looks hook-like out of that. Now my first thought for a piece of material like this would be to shoulder it, draw it out, leave part of it square, and maybe turn it into a flower shape or something. But I've done a hook like that previously here on the channel. It wasn't part of this series, but I'll link to that video up here in the corner. I think I'll still go with the general plan of drawing the hook out, maybe reduce it by about half of its width, which should draw it down at least double its length. That'll give us plenty for a hook. And then this top piece will turn into some sort of a decorative element, just not a flower. Now I'm going to leave about one and a half times the width of the material to make whatever finial I end up with, and I'm still thinking about that. So that's about two and a quarter inches. This is about an inch and a half wide. And I'm just going to neck this down at the anvil. You could do it under a smithing magician. And of course, it cools down quick when I talk about it before I hit it. It goes back to that old saying, strike while the iron is hot. I know better. Let's try and get more serious about this. This upsets and gets thicker as we do this, so I'm going to want to go over the, the horn the next heat and thin it back out in this direction as well. In fact, I can draw some of this out over the horn too. Of course, the horn gets results faster. You'll have to go back to the face to smooth it up. To see the finished hook, you have to watch the very last few seconds of the video. That's where we'll show the finished hook. Clean this up very nicely at the face now. I want a slight taper from here out. Now don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. And of course, feel free to share the videos with your friends if you'd like to. This should be our last little cleanup. I'm going to go ahead and knock the corners off just to make it a more pleasant look and feel to the hook. We'll finish shaping that after we do something with this finial end. Working at a black heat just helps smooth it up and knock some of the scale off. and help you eliminate the need to wire brush. What I'm envisioning here is kind of a heart shape. I think what I want to do is spread this out a little bit up here, maybe bring this in more of a point down here, 
and then we'll trim a heart in there. Just an idea, I kind of make these hooks up for this project as we go. We'll just use the cross pin to start spreading. I'll go to this big rounding hammer. I'm going to bring this in instead of the shoulder that I worked so hard to create. Should be able to cut something heart shaped out of that and that will do with a chisel. This is still kind of warm so I'm not gonna hold it in my hand. And I think I want a point to come down into here somewhere. I'm actually gonna end up getting rid of quite a bit of this I think. Just to make it look the size I think. Entirely up to you if you're doing a hook similar to this. You can do whatever you want to do. And I don't think I'm going to cut way down into here. I may take this out, but this part will just chisel to give it a line to follow. And most of this then will be chisel cut. And I'm going to start that cold with a curved chisel. It's a fairly straightforward project, but... If you're going to do this with a chisel, you do have to have a curved chisel. This is just to establish a, a line I'll be able to find hot. This is some tough stuff. I wonder if this is not mild steel. Yeah, that's flattening my chisel out quite readily there. I think this might uh, might be some sort of oddball scrap that isn't mild steel. We'll still be able to make the hook out of it, but I'm going to have to do this hot because my chisel chisel just won't stand up to that. So I'm going to go, I'm going to put this back in the fire, eyeball it hot, and go sharpen the chisel. You can just barely see my pencil line still. I'll get this hotter, but this does allow me to see my mark here. Once you get a good chisel mark established, it's a lot easier to get back into it. Now that's starting to cool off, so back in the fire again. Now this is why I'm generally an advocate of using known steels. So if you want mild steel, you just start with mild steel. And whatever old leaf spring or whatever this might have been, doesn't then cause problems like this. I'm doing a lousy job of cutting this curve. I think my curved chisel is not very evenly curved. Well, this one side's not bad. This is going to take some filing. Well, between heats, I went out, I spark tested this, and it is very much a high carbon steel. It uh, had a very nice bright shower of sparks. So, not what I would typically choose to make a hook out of, but I promised we'd make hooks out of as much of that stuff in the bucket as we can. So we are going to persist. This is definitely going to take some filing to clean that up. but it will be cleanable. Now this just gives a line that defines the, the heart coming down into the hook. 
The next heat will go with a first pass butcher, which is fairly steep. It'll index in that line. And the heat after that, we'll use a second pass, which is flatter. That'll make it look like the heart overlaps the body of the hook. So using the first pass butcher will better define that overlap. You can already see how this is making that stand out from the background. Then we'll use the second pass butcher to clean that up lightly. Try to advance it just a little bit each time so it ends up with a smooth line here. Work any gouges you put in it out. So now the big thing is that the top of that heart, because of the trouble we had chiseling it, is just ugly as all heck. So I'm going to file this down and get that cut a little bit better or maybe stand it up in the vise and chisel it to start it. And this has a little point that needs to be cut. This side looks pretty good. But we'll clean all that up and then I may draw it out a little bit more just to give it more volume and kind of dome it up. Well, even air cooling, whatever this is, is too hard to file cold really squeaky. So we're going to do it hot. Then we'll forge some final shape into that heart. Something else we can do to create some of this detail is chisel down here. I also want to separate this edge just a little bit where we did the butchering. I think it's going to look better. Almost gives it a floral effect that way. It's something I kind of envisioned in my head. But from the back side, I just want to spread that part out a little bit. I'm just going to use a ball peen hammer. I'm going to kind of rock it side to side this way as I do this. Start creating some volume in there. And we'll still do a little bit more hot filing on this just to clean it up. It's got a little bit flat through here, but it's not going to file cold. I've uh, pretty much figured that out, so we aren't going to try that. I think the next thing to do is punch a couple of holes. This is so hard that there's no way I'm going to drill it. Now, if you were to anneal this overnight and bury it in the vermiculite or something like that, you could probably drill it. But to get the hook done today, I don't see us being able to do that. Should have switched to a big, better hammer there, but I think we got through. I want to get that hot again between holes. In mild steel, I might try to punch 
a second hole at this point. But even punching the hole was a little bit difficult. I'm going to put these two holes fairly close so you can still get to them once the hook is bent. The hardest part about punching into a bolster is making sure you're lined up with it. But you get better at it if you practice it. Okay, even punching holes is really tough in this stuff, but I've got a good enough hole that my screws fit. And I've got place for two screws. And we're going to clean this up just a little bit. Do a little bit more work up here on the heart with a hot file. Add a touch mark. Then we can finally bend the hook. This is exactly why I try to encourage people to start with materials that are known materials. So if you're just making hooks and pokers, fireplace tools, use mild steel. Buy new mild steel if you can, or get salvaged that you know is mild steel. Using random stuff that's been in a bucket for 10, 15, 20 years, who knows how long I've had whatever this is. I have no idea what it is, no idea where it came from. But it's taking me three or four times as long to make this little hook as it should. If I were trying to make money making these hooks, I could have made four of them in this amount of time and actually sold them for a reasonable price. But as it is, I had to stop and sharpen a chisel that otherwise wouldn't have needed to be sharpened for that little bit of cutting I did. Even though I still plan to go through that bucket and use as much of the material in there as I can to make hooks, I'm going to be a little pickier. So anything that looks like tool steel for future hooks, I think we're going to pass on using that to make a hook out of. And if I get into it and it just proves to be a nuisance like this, we'll probably start all over again. But this hook is going to be a success. We are going to get it done. And hopefully you've learned something by watching me struggle with it. Simple hooks I don't put my touch mark on, but this one has ceased to be simple and is well worth signing. I'm going to scroll up these little ears that we chiseled out, or I'm going to try to. Give it one last flattening. And wire brushing, and then we can do the hook end. But we are certainly getting there. I'm just going to thin the tip out just a little bit more. So I can put a little bit of a scrolled over end on there. I'm just going to start right here. You start the, this curl with a good side up so that when you bend it up, it'll be facing the right way. Say, I don't think I want to just do my regular full curl. I just want to do something about like that. And then we'll bend the, the hook part. And a simple bending fork in the vise is a great way to bend things. And kind of adapt to what you want to look like here. Then we'll do some final straightening at the anvil probably, although that's not bad. I just want to clean that up. The bend isn't even. But by using the bending fork to start with, I'm less likely to damage the end of my hook. I like that much better. Just make sure it's all lined up and straight. Give it a last wire brushing. Now because this material has been getting so hard and clearly it hardened somewhat in air, I don't want to air cool it at this point. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back up to heat, bury it in the bucket of vermiculite, let it cool overnight. Then I'll do any final 
filing and cleaning up. Might even have to go to the grinder for that. Who knows how hard it'll get. It, it could be some sort of air hardening steel that needs to be control cooled in an electronic oven for 12 or 14 hours, something like that. We have no idea what it is. So I'm going to cool it in vermiculite. Hopefully that de-stresses it enough, softens it enough that it will be easy to work. I'm going to go ahead and finish it. You've seen all the major steps on this hook. Stick around to the last 30 seconds of the video. You'll see a close-up of the finished hook. You'll see exactly what I ended up with. I appreciate you bearing with me while we did this. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. But stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you later.